Welcome back to this course on organic chemistry in biology and drug development. In the last uh, 20 or so lectures, we are discussing the, uh, the drug development, uh, drug development processes and uh, first we, uh, we you have been told about the, uh, the modern methodology to rationally design a drug and then finally develop it for the market. Um, and then we once we uh, have that idea then we went for rapid screening of library of compounds and how to make library. Then we went for different case studies uh, of various diseases and what is the uh, reason for the onset of the disease and then accordingly uh, once the target is known then you can find molecules which are uh, acting as drugs against those targets. And we have taken uh, various types of diseases like neuro the problems with the neurotransmission then the anti cancer antibiotics uh, anti ulcer antiviral and so on. Now, at briefly uh, during this journey we have briefly described the uh, one one important aspect of drug discovery program that is once the target is identified you um, write molecules and then do some in silico screening of those molecules and finally uh, synthesize that and before you go to the human trial that is called the clinical trial there is something called preclinical trial where the that drug uh, which is the intended drug or the drug which is has the potential uh, you have to check its pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics property which are abbreviated as PKPD studies. And today we are going to discuss what are these PKPD and uh, how they can be uh, determined. Uh, and then because once the drug crosses through this PKPD barrier then only it can go to the next level that is the clinical trial. So, this is basically preclinical studies and PKPD is a very important aspect of that. Now, we have two terms one is the pharmacokinetics. and the other term is pharmacodynamics. Okay. Now, these are abbreviated as PKPD studies. Okay. I, if you remember I earlier I defined these two terms PK is basically the pharmacokinetics that means, what the drug uh, what the body does to the drug. Okay. And pharmacodynamics is what the drug uh, uh, causes to the to the body. Okay. So, it is basically uh, mutually exclusive. So, once one is basically what the body does to the drug that is kinetics another is the dynamics which is the what the drug is doing when it enters the uh, body. Okay. Now, usually what we have usually our uh, process of taking the drug is usually the oral route is preferred. Uh, oral route is more preferred than the uh, than the other intravenous IV uh, route simply because the oral route is uh, simpler no pain nothing. But the problem is that if a drug is taken via the oral route then it has to survive the the enzymes that are present uh, on its passage through the gastrointestinal tract okay. and uh, where the stomach also we know that that is uh, that is highly acidic. So, there are many barriers that the drug has to initially first have to pass that is these different enzymes and also the pH sensitivity to the to the pH. And for this reason usually what happens the drug is either uh, encapsulated in a pill uh, in a capsule kind of thing or it could be uh, it could be uh, it could be used as a tablet 
where uh, various binding binding agents are given to the drug. So, the first test for a drug is that when it goes into the GI tract, the drug has to be released number one, it has to be stable there that means, it has to be stable to pH, it has to be stable to whatever enzymes are there okay. and then it should be absorbed from the GI tract and goes into the bloodstream. Okay. Now, pharmacokinetic starts basically from the absorption stage, absorption then distribution that means, distribution and then uh, metabolism and excretion. Okay. These are the four things which are which fall under pharmacokinetics, but you see that before it enters into the before it is absorbed it has to withstand the acidity of the stomach and many of the uh, enzymes that are present in the GI tract. Okay. So, that is what is called the pharmaceutical barrier. So, initial barrier is not PKPD pharmaceutical barrier. I, I give you one example like when penicillin was discovered the first penicillin that was made and was penicillin G that is the benzyl penicillin and penicillin being a very strange molecule it is extremely unstable to pH the acidic pH of the stomach. So, it could not be given through the oral route. Uh, there are many drugs which are like that, that oral route is not available for them because they are not stable under those conditions and the conditions that are prevailing in the GI tract uh, and penicillin is a classic example. So, in, in those days penicillin uh, was given uh, in, intravenously, but now later on a lot of other penicillins have been made which are stable to those conditions. Now, one thing is that the pH uh, of the uh, the pH in the body it varies from different parts that is true, but mainly it is maintained between 6 to around 6 to 8. Like in the blood it is about 7.2 or 7.3 7.4 something like that slightly alkaline okay. and uh, there are other areas where the it could be mildly acidic. So, usually you uh, aim for a for a drug for absorption you aim for a molecule which is um, uh, which has got a pKa between 6 to 8 I will tell you why. Because once the drug I find that the drug has has passed the pharmaceutical barrier the pharmaceutical screening test that means, it is stable under the for that condition in the GI tract then the question is whether it will be absorbed or not. Now, for absorption what you need is that if it is too polar, if it is too polar that then what will happen it will be more soluble in water and then it will have a difficulty to cross the cell membrane which is hydrophobic in nature. On the other hand if it is too non-polar, too hydrophobic then what will happen it will be dissolved as droplets in 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 fats. In fat uh, it fat has the ability uh, to dissolve to put it into the kind of a micelle that it can micellize the uh, the the fatty compound means the hydrophobic drug inside. So, there will be no question of distribution uh, absorption through the through the membrane. So, it should not be very lipophilic on the other hand it should not be highly polar. So, what you have to have that if you have a molecule aim then it will be uh, it will be convenient that if it exists in equilibrium between a polar form and a non polar form. So, that means, at the when the it is required that the drug has to have some polar character to cross something, some membrane, some uh, some other organ. Then if it is required then M H plus will be the will be the species which will cross that barrier, whatever barrier it could be a uh, it could be some organ barrier, uh, the, the GI tract barrier because it has to be absorbed there. 
if if it is required that ionic species is required then it will cross through and the whole equilibria will be shifted to this direction on the other hand if it is required that uh, that the barrier that is present to this system to this drug is hydrophobic then this molecule the nonpolar molecule will pass through that nonpolar membrane and then what will happen that mh plus will be will uh, move on to the left side so basically this is a good option that you should have a molecule which has got some ionic character in equilibrium with ionic as well as neutral form that is what i am saying now what kind of molecule uh, will will exist in these two forms it is usually the nitrogen containing molecules because the nitrogen containing molecules have a basicity between between say 6 to 9 i will say okay look at histidine and uh, look at the extreme case like arginine but the normal ni the nitrogen the amines uh, if they are not guanidines then they have a usually the pk range is 6 to 8 so in 6 to 8 what will happen both the species will be present and 6 to 8 is the ph that exists in the different locations of the of the human body so the, so, you will see if you now look at the number of drugs and then screen them structurally, you will see that most of the drugs contain nitrogen and that is the main reason that it can actually distribute itself into an ionic and the um, and into the nonpolar form. Okay. So, now what happens that if you take the drug, if you suppose this is your uh, GI tract this is the stomach and then you have the large intestine the small intestine all this okay and the drug has to be absorbed from the, it could be from the esophagus it could be from the mouth also many drugs are actually absorbed through the mouth that is the saliva that is present in the mouth so the whole drug absorption process is basically the entire gi tract it starts from mouth and then ends into the small intestine okay and um, so once it is absorbed then it goes into the blood stream and after it goes to the blood stream then it has to there is a checking point huh? because anything which is foreign to the body the body wants to reject it whether it is an organ or whether it is a molecule so the body sees that some molecule has entered which is a foreign molecule so the the drug then the body wants to do something basically the body wants to expel it from the body okay so if it is uh, that is what is called metabolism if the drug is really water highly water soluble highly polar uh, then uh, then what happens the body does not have to do much because it is already soluble in water so it can be uh, it can be uh, excreted through the kidney very easily but if the drug is not very polar usually that what happens the drugs are usually not very polar as i said there has to be a balance between the polarity and the non polarity and then what happens the drug has to be made water soluble before the body can excrete it and that is what is called metabolism so one is absorption that is the gi tract the drug has to be absorbed and for that the drug has to have some balance between the hydrophobicity and the lipophilicity then there is distribution distribution is basically it now comes to the blood stream and wherever the blood is distributed the molecules uh, go there now sometimes there are also uh, some molecules which are present in the blood that can also uh, that can also may not allow the drug uh, to reach the target because ultimate aim is that it is absorbed then it is distributed but it should reach the target that is important before reaching the target uh, there are some proteins which are called albumins they are very non specific many molecules can bind to the uh, they have the ability to uh, to bind or they uh, or provide surface where the drug molecules can bind so if the the serum al this is called human serum albumin so human serum albumin sometimes absorbs uh, the drug 
and then the drug cannot reach the target. So, distribution is also important whether it is really evenly distributed and then the drug has to reach the target. Now, in case where this there is a problem that albumin is absorbing the, the drug that you uh, uh, that you are uh, interested in okay, drug to be distributed. So, what what you can do in those cases? In those cases what is usually done take another molecule which has got more affinity for the human serum albumin. So, if you do that uh, take both the molecules together then your drug will not be preferentially absorbed because the other molecule has, has more absorption potential. So, sometimes this combination of drugs uh, is, is there that is just to stop the actual drug from binding to the serum albumin. Okay. So, that is absorb, uh, distribution then comes the metabolism. So, that is the bigger, uh, bigger picture metabolism. I said why drugs have to be metabolized because the body treats that as a foreign molecule and because most of them are not highly soluble in water. So, they have to be made soluble in water. Now, there are two ways, uh, there are two ways of the body uh, doing the converting the molecule the drug into an water soluble fragment. One is put hydroxyl groups in the molecule because you know hydroxyl groups are um, hydroxyl groups enhances the polarity, uh, but the question is why hydroxyl why not amine amines are also uh, water soluble, but the problem is where is the nit we have the oxygen source and we have the enzyme system to utilize the oxygen and oxidize different molecules. Okay. So, the drugs one way that the drug has to be converted put lot of wage groups into the molecule that is one way to make it polar. The other way that is called phase 1, phase 1 metabolism and another phase uh, another metabolism is there where the drug is conjugated to a very polar molecule, highly polar molecule. So, there are two ways one is the drug can be converted into which or the drug can be conjugated to a polar molecule. And once this is done, then they can be excreted mainly through kidney because now they have water soluble unless the molecular weight is very high, then there is a problem kidney cannot filter that. Okay. Uh, now, we will discuss both these things. What is written here? Okay, I have already told what is pharmacokinetics, what is pharmacodynamics. So, pharmacokinetics has four steps absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion and uh, remember uh, when we talk about this uh, first, first uh, pharmaceutical test that where it survives the acidic conditions of the stomach uh, that is only for orally act active drugs not for the drugs which are taken uh, intravenously. And uh, so, there is a way to bypass that pharmaceutical problem because you can directly inject to the blood. Orally taken drugs must be sufficiently polar I already highlighted that. So, that in the GI tract and uh, to dissolve in the GI tract and into the blood supply, but sufficiently fatty that means sufficiently lipophilic to pass through the cell membranes. Okay. So, that is the, the points that I have made. Now, I said that there are two ways of uh, uh, two ways of doing um, uh, the metabolic changes in the drug okay, that is actually basically absorption how the drugs are absor absorbed and then distributed. So, you must follow the uh, I told you about the Lipinski's rule of 5. So, that it should be usually the drugs are less than 500 5 uh, hydrogen bond donors 10 hydrogen bond acceptors those are the upper limit and then log p value should be less than p is the partition coefficient between octanol and water okay, log p value. Uh, less than 5. So, for those it has been found that they have a very good uh, absorption as well as solubility in the blood. Okay. And something also have added no more than 7 rotatable bonds. Now, these are not uh, sacrosanct these are not uh, written in written in bible this is basically uh, a first screening test 
preliminary screening test so that pharmaceutical companies do not have to make lot of um, molecules to, to screen out a uh, lot of molecules to synthesize and then test and finally, find that those molecules are useless. So, that is a wastage. So, uh, the industries follow the Lipinski's rule. Now, let us see the drugs, the metabolism. We are going to discuss the metabolism because that is where some organic chemistry is involved. I said there are two types phase 1, phase 2. Phase 1 is uh, put hydroxyl groups and uh, or other polar groups, I will, I will show you. And uh, the second one is the conjugation with polar molecules. Okay. Now, the hydroxylation is done by, okay, so let us see drugs, foreign substances excreted through kidneys, if it is polar, non-polar conversion to more polar molecules and that is what is called metabolism. But remember one thing, the drug is given for the purpose of treatment of a disease, but if it is metabolized very rapidly, that means your drug is going out from the system very quickly. So, that is also uh, a very important issue. If metabolism is quicker than reaching the target, then the drug will be useless. So, you have to increase the dose, but then you have to again be careful that whether you are crossing the therapeutic window, all these issues are there. So, there is another big topic which is called bioavailability. That means, how long the drug exists in the bloodstream. Usually, what happens that if you are prescribed penicillin molecule, you, you take one in the morning and one in the uh, there is a gap of about 12 hours, because it has been found that the, uh, the drug is sufficiently made available uh, to the target for about 12 hours. So, you take the next dose again. So, that bioavailability, some drugs have very good bioavailability that you take the pill only once like the hypertensive, antihypertensive drugs, diabetes drugs, because uh, they, uh, can, they are more stable uh, metabolically. So, to have good bioavailability, it has to have good metabolic stability. Uh, however, it should also uh, flush out because many of these drugs are not very healthy for the kidney. They, they affect the kidney. So, they has to of course, they should be flushed out also. They should not remain in the system that the disease is gone, but the molecules remain there. That also should not happen. The molecules should also have to be uh, taken care of, so that they go out of the body. So, what happens now that we are talking about this conversion there. Now, the hydroxylation is done once the, um, once the drug enters into the bloodstream, the first organ that it crosses where a lot of this metabolic activities take place is liver, because liver is our storehouse of many metabolic enzymes. Okay. And one of the enzyme is what is called cytochrome P450, P450, it is a, it's a wide uh, range of the cytochrome P450 uh, enzymes, they are extremely non-specific, they accept many substrates and they can hydroxylate very unreactive CH bonds. Okay. So, these are the classic examples of CH activation by nature uh, and uh, you know in organic chemistry th these days the lot of CH activation chemistry are coming up and usually they use transition metals and where from this idea. Uh, uh, idea has uh, evolved, it has evolved from the cytochrome P450 chemistry. Okay. Here they use the iron. I have told you about how this uh, iron feryl oxo chemistry uh, that is utilized to uh, feryl oxo can do lot of things. Uh, one is that uh, oxidize the substrate and the oxygen comes out as water that is called oxidases. And in some cases one oxygen atom is incorporated in the molecule and other molecule other oxygen atom goes as water that is called mono oxygenase and then dioxygenase means both the oxygen atoms are incorporated into the molecule. Okay. So, that is dioxygenase. So, cytochrome P450 has different types of activities. One type of activity is mono they act as mono oxygenase because we need the hydroxylation. Okay. So, mono oxygenase it is basically an iron based uh, enzyme, we do not want to go into the details again, 
it is a feral oxo species like this i think i may have the uh, yes the mechanism is is shown here this is um, actually different books have different ways of writing this uh, let me see whether i can simplify the whole thing the feral oxo species once it is formed then you have this drug which is attached to a h so what will happen the feral oxo will go to which and so basically this is now you can write this way that one electron so it takes the hydrogen and the drug becomes the the radical so the drug whatever drug it is it has become a radical and which and you have to be careful what is the oxidation state of iron that is uh, that is important the oxidation state of iron let us see see one electron has gone here and iron gets back its electron so the oxidation state now is uh, is is 4 and then this goes out and conjugates with the drug so the drug becomes drug becomes dr drug becomes hydroxylated and the iron now again goes back to 3 the iron goes back to 3 ok. So, that is the mechanism, but the mechanism I think we have seen this mechanism time and again one in penicillin biosynthesis and also in I think some other uh, metalloenzyme uh, we have seen that that how this feral oxo species can carry out different types of reactions ok. Then uh, now what type of functionalities are involved in this hydroxylation business RCH3 just aliphatic that can be converted to RCH2H and then there are enzymes which can take it up to well up to the carboxylic acid because carboxylic acid is more polar more soluble in water. So, that is that can happen alcohol dehydrogenase is there that converts it to aldehyde and then to the acid and then uh, you can have cyclic systems that can be hydroxylated. Uh, you can have um, aromatic systems benzylic so that can be hydroxylated ketones can be hydroxylated alpha hydroxylation acetylenes because of the propargylic hydrogen that is the weakest bond here so that will be hydroxylated so these are uh, different types of uh, hydroxylation reactions that are carried out in the liver by the cytochrome p450 okay um, now there is another enzyme which also um, which also uh, is basically that also converts or degrades the molecule into into certain products which are ultimately become become they ultimately become water soluble one is cytochrome p450 and here you uh, that there you have seen that after the hydroxylation in some cases they can be oxidized to the aldehyde followed by the acid by alcohol dehydrogenase enzymes okay. and uh, acids are more soluble. Other another class of enzyme which are called monoamine oxidase monoamine oxidase okay. what it does it takes monoamine monoamine means primary amine but they do not call it primary amine oxidase they call monoamine oxidase. Okay. So, monoamine oxidase uh, what it uh, does it removes the nitrogen and forms the aldehyde. Suppose you take uh, possibly you can remember this molecule which OH, which OH and then CH2 in each 2 this is what is called dopamine. Okay. there are many drugs which are based on dopamines uh, some structural variations here okay and uh, so they have to be metabolized they have to be taken care of and so also the the natural dopamine because when dopamine is uh, dopamine comes from if you remember again tyrosine goes to the uh, dopa and then dopa goes to the dopamine by decarboxylation and then dopamine goes to norepinephrine and then finally epinephrine so dopamine concentration uh, you have to maintain at a particular level i told you that there are that is very important for neuro uh, persons suffering from neuro 
diseases, they always check dopamine, level of dopamine, level of serotonin, all these uh, neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, everything. So, dopamine, there is uh, what happens, dopamine is forming from dopa and usually it is converted into epinephrine. But there is an enzyme which is called monoamine oxidase. What it does? It oxidizes any primary amine R C H 2 N H 2 that goes to R C H O plus ammonia. Now, this is an oxidation reaction because this carbon was, uh, was basically attached to one heteroatom now double bonded O that means, one oxidation has taken place and then this can be converted into R C O 2 H. If it is a drug, then that R C O 2 H becomes water soluble. However, this monoamine oxidase uh, also becomes a target, uh, target for developing, uh, developing drugs acting against neuro disorders, where the disorder is lack of the concentration or lowering of concentration of dopamine. Uh, dopamine concentration can be lowered if it is converted to epinephrine, but epinephrine is a natural another natural uh, neurotransmitter. So, that is not a problem, but when it is degraded by monoamine oxidase, then dopamine becomes uh, is basically removed from the that circle uh, or the cycle of events that tyrosine goes to dopa, dopa goes to dopamine, then non epinephrine uh, and then epinephrine. So, if dopamine is oxidized before it reaches nor ep uh, this uh, epinephrine or non epinephrine. So, what will happen? You have a shortage, you have a lack of concentration of dopamine as well as norepinephrine and then epinephrine. So, that is a problem. Monoamine oxidase, what happens? It takes out the dopamine from circulation and converts it into the converts it to the aldehyde. Okay. So, that means, this goes to the aldehyde. So, that is what is done by the monoamine oxidase. Let me be little bit quicker. So, monoamine oxidase becomes a target for drug development also. Uh, and uh, the mechanism of monoamine oxidase very quickly I will show, see this is the monoamine R C H 2 N H 2 and uh, this is called Mao enzymes monoamine oxidase. So, what it does? It converts as I said the amine goes to the ammonia and this is converted into aldehyde. Okay. This reaction requires oxygen oxygen it is required and water. Basically, what it does? It first goes into an imenium ion and then water comes and hydrolyzes it to the aldehyde. Okay. That is the mechanism and this is suggested uh, to be a one electron sorry one electron type uh, reaction. That means, first R C H 2 N H 2 that goes to. So, if it releases one electron see you have to oxidize it that means, electrons have to now be released. The question is there is a question who takes up the electrons. Okay. Who takes up the electrons? It is you know this F A D what is F A D flavin adenine dinucleotide. Okay. So, that takes up the uh, takes up this uh, electron to, uh, and then it goes to R C H 2 N H 2 dot plus and in the process F A D goes to F A D dot. So, one electron goes from the nitrogen because that is the where uh, it is most available and then what happens F A D dot um, then to cut the story short that that goes to it loses the um, hydrogen. This F A D dot takes up the hydrogen from the alpha carbon and then that becomes a dot. So, these two dots combine and make this one the imenium salt okay. and in the process ultimately F A D becomes F A D H 2, F A D becomes F A D H 2. So, because two hydrogens have to be have to be removed one from uh, basically one from here another from here and uh, so that is the F A D H 2 and this ultimately hydrolyzes into this. Uh, so, monoamine oxidase is a very good target and you see some of the drugs that have been shown here. One of the drug is, is based on simple organic chemistry, tranyl cipromine, it is an antidepressant drug. What is the, uh, what is the 
uh, mechanism you can you can guess that once the nitrogen becomes nitrogen positive a radical and because there is a cyclopropane I have told you that the radical can be established by putting a cyclopropane alpha to it. So, it will open up like a radical clock and as it opens up the radical goes to some other place and that radical then attaches to the again to the flavin, but at a different position. So, the whole cofactor is attached to the to this molecule that means it is a kind of suicide inhibition that the normal reaction takes place the first electron is removed but then as it is removed it is like alpha that cyclopropyl methyl radical so it is cyclopropyl amine radical that also opens up immediately okay so there are many kinds of drugs uh, there are two types of mao inhibitors are there mao a mao b if you are interested you can go through it just one point i want to tell is that these mao enzymes um, if you uh, that means to increase the concentration of dopamine or even serotonin because that also has a free amine uh, then you have to use mao inhibitors but the problem there is a slight problem that mao inhibitors uh, mao inhibitors will basically stop the metabolism of any primary amine will slow down the metabolism will inhibit the metabolism and there is one compound which is called tyramine what is tyramine decarboxylated product of tyrosine what is histamine decarboxylated product of his histidine ok. So, tyramine which is present in many food products and one of them is called cheese. Cheese uh, has the highest level of tyramine ok. So, what happened many many uh, people suffering from neuro disorders they are taking these Mao inhibitors at the same time in our country we we eat less cheese but in foreign countries cheese is a very predominant item and then they were taking the cheese and cheese had lot of tyramine. The problem is if tyramine levels increase in the blood that ultimately has a cascading effect leading to heart failure and this is what is called cheese effect. Cheese effect that means a person who is taking antidepressant drugs based on Mao inhibitors they should not they should avoid cheese ok. However, medicinal chemistry has improved quite a lot. Now, we have selective inhibition of Mao A and Mao B. So, that cheese uh, effect is because westerners uh, will eat cheese uh, we Indians do not eat cheese that much ok. But anyway uh, there are other food items also they might have lot of tyramine. So, you have to be people have to be careful and uh, uh, also the reason for uh, or what is cheese effect if somebody call, uh, uh, ask you then you can tell that it is basically because of the uh, use of Mao inhibitors as antidepressants ok. The second, uh, second type of uh, removal of uh, or the metabolism of or making the molecules more polar making the drugs more polar is I said conjugation. Uh, in this case it will be bio conjugation because you are basically attaching a, a drug attaching to a drug another biomolecule. What is that biomolecule very simple the biomolecule is nothing but a glucose derivative a glucose. Uh, so, if you have an alcohol if your drug is a carboxylic acid or an alcohol or phenol then what happens it undergoes what is called glycosylation glycosylation that means it becomes earlier it was see it was the uridine diphosphate to make it a good living group uridine diphosphate. So, glue this is UDFP glucuronate see remember glucose has a CH 2 H here in this case it is carboxy that means it will be more soluble in water. So, what happens now if you have ROH then this forms the glycoside ok if it is it is carboxylic acid it forms the these are O glycosides you can get N glycosides C glycosides O glycosides all are possible ok. So, through glycosylation you can remove because glucose has lot of OHS as well as this is not glucose this is glucuronic acid that means the primary alcohol is oxidized to the carboxy and the uh, this is the agent for glycosylation and the enzyme will be called a glucuronyl transferase. Okay, because it is transferring that glucuronic group into the drug okay. that is one way the other way is you can 
convert the wage or NH into sulphate. And there are sulfotransferase enzymes, they actually form suppose ROH that will be RO sulphate and then R 2 Na N sulphate that means sulfonum, sulfonic acid derivative okay. and the reagent for doing the sulphur transfer is uh, this compound 3 prime phospho 5 prime phospho sulphate 5 prime phospho sulphate and in the here it is adenine. So, the compound is 3 prime phospho adenosine 5 prime phospho sulphate okay. and the enzyme will be called as alpha transferase. A third one the last one I will do that is the glutathione conjugation that means if you if your drug is suppose an epoxide then what will happen an epoxide then glutathione is a compound which is nothing but a tripeptide see this is this is what is glutathione. Glutathione is uh, is a L glutamic acid linked to cysteine linked to glycine, but remember in glutathione it is not the uh, the carboxylic acid alpha carboxy is not uh, which is attached by the peptide bond it is the gamma carboxy that is attached to the uh, to the cysteine and cysteine attached to the glycine this is a very good surveillance I mean surve surveillance agent because it's an antioxidant because of the sulfur it can form the disulfide and also it can form uh, it can be a very good uh, bioconjugating agent like if you have epoxide then the sulfur being a nucleophile can open up the epoxide and form this or if it is a alkyl halide if the drug is an alkyl halide then what will happen sulfur will undergo undergo alkylation but the whole thing is now soluble in water okay sometimes what happens it can actually further hydrolyze by by peptidases into only the cysteine uh, cysteine, cysteine with attached to the drug okay. and then what happens the, this is acetylated this is called mercapturic acid. Anyway the important thing is that that if you have a reactive functionality where glutathione can react then glutathione because of its uh, it is it has got a sulfur SH which is a powerful nucleophile. So, that attacks the drug and does alkylation or opening of epoxide. Uh, but ultimately there is a carbon sulfur bond formation and then the glutathione part can be degraded uh, to ultimately the cysteine and the, uh, that can be acylated and finally, uh, removed from the system. Okay. So, that is basically what is called metabolism. Excretion add me is absorption distribution metabolism we have gone through metabolism and excretion is usually through the uh, through the kidney. Okay. Uh, so, that is the part the P k part is uh, is done ok. It is mainly the P k part you remove see we are not talking about pharmacodynamics because dynamics has already been covered dynamics means what the drug does to the body. So, that means all the targets and we have said anti cancer antibiotics everything. So, that dynamic part has been taken care of, but this kinetic part now uh, is told to you. Okay. In the next session what we are going to do that could be uh, one of the penultimate session uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, something which is uh, whether uh, see designing a drug again uh, with all uh, due regards to computational chemistry everything, but ultimately there are um, certain other parameters which are very difficult to balance like I said lipophilicity hydrophobicity they are uh, or hydrophilicity they have to be balanced, but what is the value how Lipinski arrived at those values that it has to be uh, log p should be less than 5 uh, whether uh, so those are basically uh, it is an entirely different area of medicinal chemistry that is called quantitative structure activity relationship in the other in the next lecture we will do that. Thank you.